Hello YouTube and welcome. In this video I'll be showing you how to detect reverse shell connections which are being transmitted back to a command and control server. So grab your coffee or your whiskey because this one's going to get juicier than that turkey you had at Christmas. You little piglet. Okay, so what actually is a reverse shell? So a reverse shell is when an attacker, i.e. a Kali Linux machine, initiates a connection to the user, being the victim, which is probably a Windows 10 machine or something similar, uh, and the user's computer is listening for incoming connections on a specific port from our attacker machine. So here we can see our attacker on IP 1234 sends an exploit to the victim's machine listening on port 4444. The victim's machine has now established the reverse shell connection and it's actively listening for connections and commands. So detecting these types of scenarios are extremely difficult because they are obviously leveraged as far less attacks, meaning upon initial exploitation of a system, uh, the delivery of the payload, uh, i.e. Uh, PowerShell Empire, won't actually be written to disk. So I actually covered this type of scenario in a previous video. You should go check that out. So there are three methods that you can pretty much leverage here to get the data that you need, which will give you the ability to detect on these types of scenarios. Now, I'll only be covering one uh, of these uh, in today's video, but the three main are group policy, sysmon, and a custom log source. So group policy, if you haven't already got this set up in your organization, uh, you can enable the audit filtering platform connections. So this will give you a much more better rich logging experience and allow you to easily form your detections. Sysmon, absolutely great tool, extremely powerful. Um, you get detailed information on process creations, network connections, file changes, etc. I would really highly recommend deploying this to your critical infrastructure. Um, it's an absolutely fantastic tool. And then custom log source. So this is what we're going to be doing today in this video, uh, purely because I like to think outside the box and show you how fulfilling it is actually creating a custom solution. And, you know, you can use this method for any scenario that you might have. Okay, so that being said, um, let's jump over and get into the demo. Okay, so I'll be using um, PowerShell to create our custom log source here. So now that we're on our victim's machine, I'm just going to run a get net TCP connection. I'm going to hit this. Okay, so here we can see we've got plenty of data here. Um, so if I scroll to the top, we've got the local address, local port, remote address, remote port, state, applied setting, and owning process. Okay, so there's quite a bit of uh, stuff going on here. So let's actually filter this out. So I'm going to go state and then establish and then pipe that and go select. I only want to see local address, uh, local port, and remote address, and remote port. Let's hit this. Awesome. Okay, so, you know, we've got nothing unusual really going on here. Um, these are Microsoft IP addresses, um, you know, with, with a simple uh, lookup, you can be able to see that these are, you know, non-threatening. So uh, a special thanks to uh, Jay Minton here, who created a much more advanced get net TCP script. So I'll be using this in the demo going forward. I'll pop a link in the description below. But to summarize, JScript actually pipes the owning process by path and user, which is extremely useful when we come to create our detections in Azure Sentinel later. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the script and then I'm just going to copy and then I'm just going to paste. It's not letting me paste. Definitely still not letting me paste. We go excellent so the data here that's being presented is far more valuable and much more richer than what we've got above here so not only have we got our local address local port and address we've also got the path of the executable that's running the hash and actually the user um, which is actually controlling that process so 
this is great now all we need to do now is export this data uh, in a csv format and then get this data into sentinel um, i have actually used this method in a previous video so uh, feel free also to go check that one out um, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to get rid of format table because that wrecks the format in i'm going to go export csv uh, and then we're going to go os info csv and then dash no type information awesome okay let me just open this up real quick brilliant so this is exactly what we wanted to see Everything that we're just seeing on screen here has now been outputted into this. So to get this information into Azure Sentinel, um, I've actually opened it by accident. So this is actually what we've used previously uh, in, in a video that I did for creating a custom log source. So um, the AZ monitor script, obviously nothing needs to be changed on this side, but uh, here we've got our um, parameters and variables in here so what we're going to do is just highlight this and run okay and now it says the payload has successfully uploaded so our os info has now been sent to azure sentinel so what i'm going to do is i'm going to flick over to the azure sentinel uh, dashboard in the portal and we can start running some queries so we're now logged into the uh, azure portal i'm in the sentinel uh dashboard and we're going to go over to logs and click get started we're going to untick that even though it doesn't work and it shows every time and then we're going to go x and then on the left under tables we have custom logs so here we have our net tcp so if i type net tcp connections and you know let's just get rid of that i'm, I'm just going to hit run and as you can see, we've got all the data that's actually coming in from there. So here we can go like where, uh, path, um, contains, and then let's say I know PowerShell, I guess. Let's run this. Okay, we've got nothing in there. Um, let me just hash this out and run this again. So we've got the path. So where path contains uh, L SAS. So let's get rid of this. So we have an RSS run. Okay, now let's filter that out. So you know we've got it. We're getting a quite a bit of information here. So obviously, you know, if you've got a uh, trying to find out if a piece of malware is running, you could say um, exclude PowerShell or include PowerShell. Exclude say SV host, uh, SVC host. Um, so this is obviously only showing the uh, LSAS. Um, uh path and the executable so um this is great this is this is awesome so what we're going to do now is i'm going to flick over to my victim machine and we're going to actually run a file which i have already um so i'm just going to minimize this actually i need to flick over to the other one which is in the temp I'm going to copy this and I'm just going to paste it on the desk. Here we go. Okay, so I've just double clicked this. Let's see if it's running. Yeah, trustme.exe. Okay, I'm just going to reset this again. And there we go. So you can see now that the trustme.exe is actually. Uh, going to a remote address which is 10.0.0.4 okay so what i'm going to do real quick is actually let's export this out to for the csv os info csv information uh, score okay and i'm just going to send this to um, our Azure Sentinel workspace. Okay, so let's just have a talk about that .exe. So the .exe is called trustme.exe. Um, where has it gone here? It's, it's got a hash and it's got the Sentinel here. So if I just double click and open this, 
Uh, if I go across and find me here. So you can see that it's run as a user, which is me. Whoops, now it's opened again. Um, this one here highlighted. So what is this? So basically, this is a piece of malware which I created uh, using MSF Venom. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Oh, damn! Which I then leveraged uh, using Metasploit, uh, using the Metasploit framework. Um, it's encoded using the Shikata Jai Nai encoder to basically evade Windows Defender. Hence why it's not been blocked and it's still running. This is still actually one of the most popular exploit flame, uh, frameworks for Metasploit. And it's it's incredible. Um, so using these simple methods, you can easily create a dangerous piece of malware. Um, so what I'm going to do is now that's that's executed, I'll just show you quickly um, of the capabilities of this this um, exe. So I'm just going to flick you over to here. So this is my um, the executable that's running now. So if I go get working directory, we will be able to see that's where the exact location is. Here we can see the DC. Um, there's a DC, it's a computer, blah, 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 it's a computer. Um, it's a domain uh, joined here. So we've got, you know, Sentinel Park. And if we've got PS here, which is processes, we can see what processes is actually running on the system. So this is incredibly powerful and also pretty, quite scary. So we're going to go back over to our victim machine now. And now that we've run our commands, uh, that's already gone up. So that's been, the payload has been sent. So, yep, yeah, yeah, we did that previously. Yeah, of course we did. So now that that's done, um, I'm going to flip back over to the Azure Sentinel portal. Um, we're actually going to see this data in there and then we can start doing, running some commands. Okay, so now I'm back in the Sentinel dashboard. We're going to run a TCP connection query here. Uh, we do the past 30 minutes. Oops, let's do the past hour. There we go. Okay, here we go. We can see our trust me right there. So if we want to filter our query down, we can go where path uh, does not contains, and then we can go L. Uh, so wait, I spelled that wrong. Let's start exe. Let's run this. Okay, let's go with that, and then we can do this. Uh, whoops, we can do the same for uh, S V C H O S T, and then we can do the same for D F S R, and then the same for D N S. You kind of get the gist of what we're trying to do here. We're trying to filter out all the ones which are uh, not relevant to what we are actually looking for. So anything which which looks, um, you know, kind of malicious. Um, so Windows Azure. Okay. So I mean, there's quite a few more which we can filter down there, but you know, ju just by filtering out from the ones that are common prone uh, processes will really give you that, um, you know, visualization into uh, any malicious actors. So, I mean, if there is an adversary trying to be really sneaky, they would probably refactor the malicious.exe to be called SVC host, or maybe even mask it as the Windows Azure guest agent. So it would kind of be down to you as the detection engineer to identify what process is malicious or not and simply researching the, the IP address that it's going to, um, to and from. So check that first. It's, you know, it's also got a legitimate hash and that's a legitimate application and that it's running and that the owning process is actually legit. So obviously here we can see that this is clearly not legitimate. Um, uh, another thing to, to, to point out is what we can PowerShell is also leveraged heavily with um, reverse shells. So you could also have a uh, contained PowerShell in there. Now that's good because obviously um, if you did have a PowerShell 
uh, in there that's running, then that's obviously you know malicious. Um, PowerShell shouldn't be doing any kind of remote connections unless you're le leveraging it for administrative tasks. But he could put a, you know an exclusion for this. Um, so again, it, it's down to how you want to manipulate that data to see the results that you want to see. So you could obviously get rid of um, all of the remote addresses and just have an address which uh, is not on your local area network. So again, this can obviously be done via group policy and can be done via Sysmon. Again, pick a data source ingestion solution that's right for your business. Uh, and that is how you detect reverse shell connections using Azure Sentinel. Thanks for watching the video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't, well, that's just fine. Please subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your nan. Cheers.